Shalom. Kohalayimla Yahweh. Bahashim Yahweh Shai. Bahashim Rakakadash. All praises be to the Most High Yahweh in the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, and pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad, and double honors and respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson entitled, What is the Order of St. Michael? I came across this image of the so-called Queen of England. And you can't see firsthand what the image is. So we're going to look up or look at a blown up image of the badge she's wearing. Can you see it? Let's get a more blown up image. Look at this. So these Edomites are rejoicing that Israel has been trodden down underfoot by the Gentiles. I mean, this is unbelievable. There's her, and you can't see or tell what badge she's wearing. <coughs> unbelievable. So these devils are flaunting that they're in rulership, the Edomites, and they are not the original royal monarch. As we know, the Israelites ruled during the Dark Ages. Because Rome fell around 90 AD under Domitian. In the Dark Ages, the hard dates that most historians accept is from 300 to about 1450 AD. So we're going to go into this. What is the order of St. Michael? I mean, this is unbelievable. These Edomites are something else. And they'll probably take this video down also. Let's go into what this order is. <clears throat> calls for redesign of royal honor over offensive image. Petitions say the image of St. Michael standing on Satan is reminiscent of the George Floyd killing. Wow. So it's sparking controversy. <clears throat> Unbelievable. Campaigners are calling for the redesign of one of Britain's highest honors, personally bestowed by the Queen, because they say its badge resembles a depiction of a so-called white angel standing on the neck of a chained so-called black man. And we, we know that when you read Ezekiel chapter 1, the angels are described as so-called black men, like in color to brass or burnish brass. Let's keep going. The Order of St. Michael and St. George is traditionally awarded to ambassadors and diplomats and senior foreign office officials who serve abroad. It has three ranks the highest of which is the Knight Grand Cross, followed by the Knight Commander and Companion. The imagery on the award's badge portrays St. Michael trampling on Satan. Come on now, Esau. <coughs> Come on. Sa Satan, in the Hebrew, Shaitan, human adversary or adversary of God. So who is a human adversary that's creating an anti-Hamashiach doctrine that took the children 
of Israel in captivity, the Lord's gold and silver, the apple of his eye, who put themselves up as fake white man Jebus, who stole the Holy Land. You Edomites need to stop playing. And devil comes from Diablos, deceiver, slanderer, or false accuser. <coughs> Let's keep going. The imagery on the awards badge portrays St. Michael trampling on Satan. But campaigners say that the badge is reminiscent of the killing of George Floyd by so-called white officers in the United States that led to worldwide protests. A petition calling for the medal to be redesigned has attracted more than 2,000 signatures. The petition started by Tracy Reeve says this is a highly offensive image. It is also reminiscent of the recent murder of George Floyd by the so-called white policeman in the same manner presented here in this medal. The same manner presented here in this medal. We, the undersigned, are calling for this medal to be completely redesigned in a more appropriate way and for an official apology to be given for the offense it has given. So white supremacy has reigned since the Renaissance. Renaissance means rebirth. When the Edomites came back into power and whitewash all of the so-called dark age images. And you can look this up. Russian icons. So the whole global system is under Edom or so-called white supremacy. Bumi Thomas, a Nigerian British singer, activist and specialist in visual communication said that the imagery on the badge is clear. It is not a demon. It is a so-called black man in chains with a white blue-eyed figure standing on his neck. It is literally what happened to George Floyd and what has been happening to the so-called black people for centuries under the guise of diplomatic missions. Active subliminal messaging that reinforced the conquest, subjugation, and dehumanization of people of color. It is a depiction on a supposed honor of the subjugation of the so-called black and brown people of the world and the superiority of the so-called white, a construct born in the 16th century. So once again, they came into power. <clears throat> Excuse me. Edomites came into power during the Renaissance, somewhere around 1453. So the whole earth is under the vibration of white supremacy. It is a depiction of a supposed honor of the subjugation of the black and brown people of the world, so-called, or superiority of the so-called white race, a construct born in the 16th century. It is the definition of institutional racism that this image is not only permitted, but celebrated on one of the century's highest honors, while statues are being pulled down and relocated. Emblems and symbols of this nature need to be redesigned to reflect a more progressive, holistic relationship between Britain and the Commonwealth nations. So these Edomites are being made bare and being exposed to all types of wickedness. This is the past that informs the present 
and why it symbolized everything that the so-called Black Lives Matter are, com are campaigning for. It provides a challenge, an opportunity. A challenge is to acknowledge it and own it. But the opportunity is to put it right. It is easy to get rid of an image. But I would like root and branch restructuring. Because most of the institutions created by the empire are still there. For most so-called black and brown people, there is nothing good about the empire. And that empire is the dragon under the Edomites, the serpent seed, or the great red dragon. So this is their kingdom. Second Ezra 6 and 9. Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that follow. For most black and brown people, there is nothing good about the image. Most people will see this as an image of George Floyd on a global scale and as a symbol of so-called white supremacy. The order was founded in 1818 under King George III. Wow. It was originally created to honor service in the Mediterranean during the, Neo, during the Napoleonic Wars. During the um, Emperor Napoleonic Wars, he was the Emperor of um, France, Napoleon, in the 1800s. The order was founded in 1818 under King George, and it was originally created to honor service in the Mediterranean during the Napoleonic Wars, a model that surrounds the image is of auspicium meteoris aevi, Latin for omen of a better age. See that? <clears throat> These elites study Bible prophecy. We're under the age of Esau Edom. That's why I read 2 Ezra 6 and 9. Esau is the end of the world. Jacob is the beginning of it. That follow. When you go into that age in Matthew chapter 24, or let's get it. Let's get it. So it's talking about an eon or an age, the end of the world. Matthew 24, verse 3. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? That end of the world is the end of an age or eon under who? You got it. Esau, Edom. Let's go into the word. I mean, this is unbelievable. Look at that. <clears throat> unbelievable. Somebody has to pay for these crimes. Let's go here. The book of Luke, chapter 21, verse 24. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. So we're looking at a symbolic representation of Israel, Jerusalem, being trotted down by the Gentiles. The serpent took down Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. What serpent? Rome, around 70 AD. Well, they're celebrating the fall of Jerusalem. And in that, at that time, the southern kingdom was still intact. 
Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, a northern kingdom had already come over to the Americas around 722 BC. So this is a celebration of victory over the fall of Jerusalem when Israel was cast down to the ground. Book of Isaiah, chapter 18, verse 7. In that time shall the present be brought unto the Lord. Isaiah 8, Isaiah 18, verse 7. In that time shall the present be brought unto the Lord of hosts of a people scattered and peeled, and from a people terrible from their beginning here there too a nation meted out and trodden underfoot whose land the rivers have spoiled to the place of the name of the Lord of hosts the Mount Zion so Israel is trotted trodden down underfoot let's go to Isaiah 18 verse 6 They shall be left together unto the fowls of the mountains and unto the beasts of the earth. And the fowls shall summer upon them and all the beasts of the earth shall winter upon them. When, he, when Israel is not in rulership, we're living under the valley of the shadow of death. We're serving the dead under the heathen and Gentile nations. So right now we're trotting down underfoot. Let's read that again. Isaiah 18, verse 7. In that time shall the present be brought unto the Lord of hosts of a people scattered and peeled, and from a people terrible from their beginning here there too, a nation meted out and trodden underfoot, whose land the rivers have spoiled to the place of the name of the Lord of hosts, the Mount Zion. So we're trodden down by the heathen and Gentile nations with Esau in rulership. So he is the head of that great red dragon, the fourth beast spoken of in Daniel chapter 7, Revelations chapter 12, Revelations chapter 13. Let's go to Lamentations 1, verse 7. Jerusalem remembered in the days of her affliction and of her miseries all her pleasant things as she had in the days of old when her people fell into the hand of the enemy and none did help her. The adversaries saw her and did mock at her Sabbaths. Let's go up. Something else I wanted to get here. moment. Let's read. Let's go up to the Lamentations 1 verse 3. Judah is gone into captivity because of affliction and because of great servitude. She dwell among the heathen. She findeth no rest. All her persecutors overtook her between the straits. The ways of Zion do mourn because none come to the solemn feast. All her gates are desolate. Her priests sigh. Her virgins are afflicted and she is in bitterness. Her adversaries are the chief. Her enemies prosper. For the Lord have afflicted her for the multitude of her transgressions. Her children are gone into captivity. 
before the enemy. So what you're seeing is a symbolic representation, <coughs> a representation of Israel being trodden down by the other nations. So Israel has been subdued. And this is a celebration of the fall of Jerusalem. And it also represents our captivity and servitude to the other nations. Let's go to Lamentations 1, verse 6. And from the daughter of Zion, all her beauty is departed. Her princes are become like hearts that find no pastor, and they are gone without strength before the pursuer. Jerusalem remembered in the days of her affliction and of her miseries all her pleasant things that she had in the days of old, when her people fell into the hand of the enemy and none did help her. The adversaries saw her and did mock at her. So this is a shameful period for Israel right now to be at the bottom because we transgressed the law, transgressed the law and forsook the covenant, the agreement that we made with the Most High in the wilderness by blood. And this is absolutely unbelievable. Let's go to Lamentations 1 and 21. They have heard that I sigh. There is none to comfort me. All my enemies have heard of my trouble. They are glad that thou hast done it. Thou will bring the day that thou hast called, and they shall be like unto me. So these other nations know who we are. That's why they celebrate our downfall, our captivity of being trodden underfoot. But what they have done is going to be done unto them. Lamentations 1, verse 22. Let all their wickedness come before thee and do unto them as thou hast done unto me. For all my transgressions, for my sighs are many, and my heart is faint. So it's not over yet. It's just going to be done unto them. There's one more I wanted to get. I can't remember where it's at. Here we go. Lamentations 1, verse 15. The Lord hath trodden underfoot all my mighty men in the midst of me. He hath called an assembly against me to crush my young men. The Lord hath trodden the virgin, the daughter of Judah, as in the winepress. So the Most High is using Esau to tread down Israel. That's why when Jerusalem fell, the Romans came in, the great red dragon. So we're being treaded down underfoot. Well, the Most High is doing it through Esau Edom. Let's read that again and close out. And now we are a mockery and a reproach, which means we're being made fun of by the other nations. Wow. Let's go back to that. <clears throat> Lamentations 1, verse 15. The Lord hath trodden underfoot all my mighty men in the midst of me. He hath called an assembly against me to crush my young men. 
the Lord hath trodden the virgin, the daughter of Judah, as in the wine press. So right now, we're trotting down underfoot until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Luke 21, verse 24. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. So that time is almost up for Esau Edom's rulership, his kingdom. Lamentations 4, verse 21. Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom, that dwellest in the land of us. The cup also shall pass through unto thee. Thou shalt be drunken and shall make thyself naked. The punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion. He will no more carry thee away into captivity. He will visit thine iniquity, O daughter of Edom. He will discover thy sins. So they're being exposed and made bare for being the wicked, for taking the most highest chosen children in the captivity, for slaying us, oppressing us, and refusing to let us go. Matter of fact, let's get one more. Exodus 22, I think it's 21, verse 16. Exodus 21, verse 16. And he that stilleth a man and selleth him, or if he be found in his hand, he shall surely be put to death. But we're still, we are still in your hand, Esau Edom. So that judgment is death. When Yahweh comes back with the chariots of the Lord, bring judgment spoken of in Isaiah chapter 16 verse 5 Isaiah chapter 66 verse 15 through 17 hopefully this lesson has been edifying all praises to Yahweh Mahashem Yahweh Shai Mahashem Rakakadash we got next Lord willing Kwame Yasharala and Abad Baba. Shalom, rock a thumb.